Welcome to a virtual Christmas Eve worship service at St. John's United Church of Christ in Vincennes, Indiana. This is the night of nights. We've been anticipating the birth of the Christ child, the coming of God to this world through a baby. And so we celebrate this night with scripture, communion, and candlelight. As we gather as a community of faith, apart yet together, as we come to give thanks for the baby born in Bethlehem. We pray that this is a time of health and safety for you and yours, that this is an opportunity to which we may worship and gain strength from the gift of a child, a gift of Jesus. Let us celebrate this day, celebrate this Christmas Eve, and prepare ourselves for worship. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace and goodwill to all. For out of God's own being, Jesus has come to bring love and light to all people. Through Jesus the Christ, we know God with us. Come to gather our tears and laughter, our work and play into God's love. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace and goodwill toward all. Let us pray. God of light, we thank you for giving us the gift of Jesus Christ. We come before you with wonder and delight that you come to us in the child born in a manger. Be with us on this night as we celebrate birth and rebirth. Come, honor us with the presence of your gracious, joyful spirit. Fill our weary hearts with renewed hope and joy. Rekindle in our souls the light of Christ. Glory to you in the highest, O God. Glory in the highest. Amen. I now say Merry Christmas to our children. And I imagine many of you are excited at the thought of opening the presents that you may have under your Christmas trees at home. Some of them may be in big boxes. Others might be wrapped as small packages. But they are all given with love from parents and family and friends. Tonight, I brought a little Christmas present, at least little looking in size. But in this gift, there are some of the greatest gifts that we could possibly have. Gifts given by God. 
And I thought we would just explore what some of those gifts are. Let me take out one here. And that's the gift of friends. Isn't it wonderful to have friends who gather around with us, who come to us and share both in our joys and in our sorrows? And we also have the gift of hope. Hope is something deep within our hearts, hope given to us by God. And we have an, another gift, the gift of love. And in a way, that is such a priceless, priceless gift. No money in the whole wide world could ever buy love for us, but it's given to us from others who care about us, who are with us on our journeys, who walk beside us. And we also have a gift of family, family that journeys with us, family, people who are with us no matter what the circumstances, who love us even when we may not be lovable and who care for us day in and day out, who give of their very best so that our lives might have meaning and purpose. And we look at others. Oh, and here is a message that God gave us through the angels a message that says, fear not, fear not, for God is with us. God is with us in each and every day and in all moments. And we have, let's see, another gift. And that is the gift of Jesus. The gift of Jesus, whose birth we celebrate this night. The gift of Jesus who guides us along the way. The gift of Jesus who taught us how to love one another and asked us to love each other just as we love our very own selves. Tonight, we give God thanks for all of these gifts and for so many gifts, so many, many more. So remember that no matter what package you open, no matter how big it might seem or how small, that God gives us the very best gifts of all, gifts that can't be bought, but gifts that are freely given and come to us from God's very own heart. May you have a wonderful, wonderful and blessed Christmas. Tonight we light the candles of hope. Peace. Joy. And love. And also on this night, to celebrate the birth of God's Son, we light the Christ candle. Holy One, we give you thanks for your presence among us in Jesus, 
your child born into a poor family. Christ has entered our lives and embraced our hope and our struggle, showing forth the power of your love in healing, teaching, and challenging the powers of the world that lead to death. With confidence in your faithfulness, we welcome your beloved child in our midst. We see, receive a gift, the most wonderful gift of all, the gift of Jesus Christ. When God's light came into the world through the birth of a child, God's blessings were showered upon us. And so we give thanks in many different ways, for God has gifted us not only with Jesus, but with time, talents, and treasures. And so we give prayerful consideration to what, how we may say thanks to God. And in so doing, we share those gifts. As we pray tonight, we remember that those gifts are needed by the church and by the world. And we may find ways in which we may share and give thanks to God. Let us pray the offering prayer. Loving God, may these offerings bring peace, hope, peace, love, and joy to others who seek a better life for themselves. Use our gifts to do justice in the world or neglect and world of neglect and indifference. May the coming of Christ child inspire us and others to give more abundantly. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Tonight we share the we share the story, the story of the birth of Jesus as is told in the Gospel of Luke. Tonight we hear this story, the angelic announcement to Mary. Luke 1, 26 through 38. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God into a town in Galilee called Nazareth. To a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. He came to her and said, Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord and the Lord God will give to to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be since I am a virgin? And the angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you, and therefore the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God, and now your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son, and this is the sixth month for her who has said to be barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. And there Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. And then the angel departed from her. Next we hear that Mary visits with Elizabeth and praises God. In those days, Mary set out and went with haste to a Judean town in the hill country where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, 
the child leaped in her womb. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why has this happened to me that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For as soon as I heard the sound of your greeting, the child in my womb leaped for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her by the Lord. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Surely from now on all generations will call me blessed. For the Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich empty away. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, according to the promise he made to our ancestors to Abraham and to his descendants forever. After Mary, and then Mary remained with her about three months and then returned to her home. Hear now the story of the birth of Jesus. In those days, a decree went out from the Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All sent to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth to Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was a descendant from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged, and who was expecting a child. And while they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in bands of cloth, and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region there were shepherds in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then the angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David of a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, 
The shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. And so they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in a manger. And when they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. Let us in these moments turn our hearts and our minds, our lives to God in a time of prayer. Let us pray. God of wonder and delight, we give you thanks that you call us into the, your presence and that even though we are separated by distance, we are joined together through the bonds of your love. Warm our hearts with your tender love and your guiding grace and embrace us and the world with your presence on this holy night as we celebrate the birth of the Christ child. Remind us that no matter who we are or where we are on life's journey, you welcome us with wide open arms and embrace us always. Fill us with comfort and joy that we might reflect the hope of the Christ child in our hearts and in our lives. We give you thanks that you have come into our midst as light and wisdom, desiring to be known to us and to be found in the world around us. Open our eyes and our ears and our hearts to recognize you where you dwell, in our midst, challenging us and lighting the way. We pray for your church that followers of Jesus may be peacemakers where there is strife and work for justice for all people. Grant that as disciples we might work together for the good of everyone. We ask your blessings for the world that you love so much that you sent Jesus to show us that love and to show us the way of life. Grant that the leaders and peoples of this world might be open and receptive to working together, that there might be peace, that there might be justice, that everyone might dwell in safety, and that everyone might know goodness. We also pray for this country that leaders may govern with wisdom and compassion and work together for the common good. For those who are ill, that you might bring health. For those who are dying, that you might give them comfort and bring them peace. For healthcare workers, essential workers, for researchers, for all who have, especially during this time as the world struggles with this pandemic. pandemic given of themselves to serve others and to bring comfort as well as hope, that you might bring them the strength, the wisdom, and the comfort that they also need. And we pray for our families and friends during this special holy season, as so many of us need to be separated from one another because of safety and out of concern that you might increase and strengthen our love for one another and hold us all in your embrace. Holy God, hear these and all of our prayers. Lead us into the future with a hope that comes from your heart and with your love and grace. In the name of the one whose birth we celebrate, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. (coughs) 
O holy night, the stars are brightly shining. It is the night of the dear Savior's birth. Long lay the world in sin and harrow pining till he appeared and the soul felt its worth. A thrill of hope the weary world rejoices for yonder breaks a new and glorious morn fall on your knees oh hear the angels voices oh night divine oh when Christ was born, O night, O holy night, O night divine, fall on your knees, O voices a night divine oh night when Christ was born oh night oh Today we have an opportunity to come to the Lord's table to share this most holy meal, a meal that was first shared with the disciples by Jesus, by the one who's born tonight as he grew to be a man and to share the good news. So he shared a time when they may share, gather together and share this most holy meal. It is good that we may know the blessings to come together as a community of faith, though we are apart, to come to the table. As we come, we prepare our hearts and our lives through a time of confession. Let us pray. Eternal God, we come before you in awe of your love. We begin to see ourselves more clearly and we confess that we have turned away from you. You sent Jesus to save us, but we often trust ourselves more than you. You have shown us the way of the Prince of Peace, yet we do not live in peace in the world or with one another. You ask us to follow the one who is the Christ, but so often we place our loyalty elsewhere. You have come among us in Emmanuel, but we often turn to so many other gods, including prized possessions, money, self, and status symbols. Holy God, please forgive us. Help us give ourselves to you anew and restore us to a right relationship with you. In Jesus' holy name, amen. Beloved sisters and brothers, know that the God who loved the world so much, that God gave Jesus Christ, sent Jesus Christ among us to show the way of God's love. 
that that holy God loves you and forgives you and draws you into new relationship. Know that you are a forgiven people. Amen. And let us pray. Most holy and gracious God, on this night in which we celebrate the birth of your son Jesus, a night in which we give you thanks for this blessing, we also thank you for the opportunity to come to this table. We know, God, that this is a place where we may know of love and blessing and nourishment. And it's you, O oh God, whose Son gave this meal first to his disciples. They gathered in the upper room to celebrate the Passover. And, and at that time, at the end of the meal, Jesus shared with them. He broke the bread and he blessed it and he took up the cup at, at the empty place and blessed it and said to them, whenever you eat or drink of these, do so in remembrance of me, for they are the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And so we give thanks and pray that your Holy Spirit will be come forth to truly bless these elements, that they may be the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ, and that we may be nourished by them and by your Holy Spirit, all these prayers we lift up in the name of your Son, Jesus, who has taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Through bread that is broken, we participate in the body of Christ. And through the cup, we participate in the blood of Christ. Let us partake. Let us pray. Gracious and holy God, we give you thanks that you have gathered us, that you have gathered us in spirit on this most holy night, and that you have nourished us at many tables, all of which are the table of Jesus Christ. Help us remember the nourishment that you give through the days of our lives in all that we might face in days and years to come. Bless us with the power of your spirit that your love and your joy and the peace and hope that you give might be reflected in us. For we pray in the holy name of Jesus. Amen. No. Okay, no words. Huh? I said no words.
as you are reminded this night of love eternal, come to be light of the world. So may light shine into your hearts and into your lives. And may you share the light of Christ wherever you are, remembering that Jesus said of himself, I am the light of the world. And remembering that he said of those who follow him, you are the light of the world. May you be blessed with light and love this night and always. Amen. This night, may you be blessed and may you know hope in your heart, peace that passes all human understanding, joy that comes from God alone, and that love is eternal. And may you know the birth of Christ in your hearts and in this world, to embrace you, to hold you, and to carry you on in each and every moment. May God bless you now and always. Amen. Amen.